happens that could be I guess you I was shoveling, I've got blisters. Have you ever got right. blisters? Oh, it happened last week. I'm from the shovel, I'm splinters. I, I, I avoid pulling. a shovel now. <laughs> I just don't like it. Well, you know, there's other things that happen too with the shovels. Um, I always break mine. Have you ever broken yours? Not yet, but I remember uh, last year my dad, he had a shoveling accident. Oh, he no. He his back. I had surgery. It was bad times. Well, that I can never find the stupid thing when I want it. And, and I don't know if you, but cutting weeds, they're never sharp. It's like digging holes with a stick. So, you know, we need to we need to redesign that and come up with some good ideas. Yeah, that'd be nice. That'd be a good improvement for the future. Yeah, I think so too. Hey, where are you going? I need to go to the bathroom. No, sit down, shut up, and listen. I really need to go to the bathroom. No, sit down, shut up, and listen. Sit. Okay. Okay, today we are learning Shoveling for dummies. Okay, that blister you got yesterday is inexcusable. You should be using group eight shovel. Next time, if I don't if I don't see you using group eight shovel, you're expelled. Umma da papta vichi da va bene, si tu la parla mi è americano, quando si fa la mola sotto la luna, umma da bene in cave di I love you. Okay, Zach, I think our first radical idea over here, that we should make this handle um, a, a metal detector alarm so that if you happen to hit something metal, you know, it'll tell you, um, like pipes, so that you wouldn't run into a pipe. Um, I think we should also make this shovel handle, this shaft right here. If you make it out of carbon fiber, it's lightweight, it won't conduct electricity, and it won't break. And you must also put over there that it doesn't conduct electricity, so it's non-conductive. This gives you your light weight and gives you your um, breakage. Damn it, Zach, the other day, I lost my shovel. I don't really? know how I did it, I just lost it. I didn't know that was possible. It's possible, I mean, I'm blonde, so give me a break. But uh, I was thinking, like, we could put a tracking device attached into the handle of the shovel and have one of those, like, little remote key sensor things that you use for your car. That'd and work. so we can track it and it beeps where the shovel is. Yeah, you put it, like, right on the handle. Yeah. And how convenient would that be? You just have your little device, you know where that is. Next time you lose a sh uh, I guess you lose your shovel, you use your device, you track your shovel, and you can go to work. Yeah, this seems to work. Have a little beepy noise and a little flash. Yep. You know, I always have a problem with my shovel. It's too big. It won't even fit in my shed. Really? Yeah, it's four foot tall. Oh, wow. Wow. Yeah. Do you have problems with it being too short, too long? What, what's the deal? It's too long. So we I, need I to have make no place it, to store it. So we need to make it shorter. Yeah. Okay. If that's possible. Well, what about if we make this handle so this, the, um, it's retractable on your shaft? That could work. So that Easier for digging than just... If you need it shorter, you can make it shorter, and if you need it longer, then it's longer. It also works for storage. It'll fit in that little bit just wanted that one tool where you can have so many uses with it. So why don't we do a concept where we have three parts to the shovel. We have the shaft the handle, and the head. And with these three components, we can interchange having different handles 
different length, uh, yeah, different length shafts and also different heads. So if we wanted, for instance, to use a rake, we attach the rake to the shovel. And if we wanted it to have a slight bit longer, we might have a five foot long shaft instead of having the three foot long shaft. And if you want extra comfort, you can add the, the grip handle rather than just a straight handle. So does that sound like a good idea? I think it sounds like a really good idea. Then you've got multiple tools in one. Yeah, and in order to just, I guess, attach them, it's just a screw-on component, and then you seal it over the top with an extra seal. So we have a detachable handle, shaft, and blade. If you ask me, it sounds like a bloody good idea. Great idea. Yo, Joey. Wobble, well, wobble. Well, wrong jelly, man. I'm talking about gel. So what I was thinking of is, with our handle, we can have like a, a gel sort of form-fitted grip so that every time you grab it, it forms around your hand and it'll, I guess will reduce blisters because there's no wood and it'll also form, I guess, uh, stop blisters uh, from occurring. And um, I guess it'll just be, feel I guess, the extra comfort of gripping that, that gel grip and uh, I guess it, it's going to help in the long run with the, I guess, with your hands and um, yeah, it's just going to be. That'd be nice. Because every time I shovel, I always get blisters. Yeah. So nowhere. I mean, and it, it feels like just a, a soft, nice, like sort of fabric, um, sort of like a mouse pad. But uh, I was also thinking, we could, I guess, in the winter or in the summer, sometimes your handle gets a bit hot or cold. So I was thinking we could have like a heated device or a cooling device in the handle which is, I guess, like lithium bat uh, battery operated. And by, um, I guess, turning a switch, you can automatically heat your handle during the winter, say, if you're shoveling snow. Or during the summer, if it's 110 degrees out, you really, I guess, are feeling the heat. You can turn the, the cooling system on, and it cools your hands, and uh, will make shoveling easier. Yeah, it'll help out over the winter time. Yeah. You have to shovel snow. So, yeah, that's... Aren't you sick of those crummy old shovels where you get splinters and blisters and you're always injuring yourself? Well, we came up as part of Group A with our ultimate shovel, and this includes extra wide foot treads with rubber uh, I guess, inserts so that you don't slip off. We also have an equally weighted shovel so that I guess the, the weight distribution as you're, you're lifting um, I guess won't hurt your back and uh, will reduce injury. We also have a medium carbon stainless steel head, which means that it won't rust, and it's also fairly light. We also have a density detector installed in the foot treads, which tells you if you're going to hit any hard objects or the air pockets within the ground. The shaft of the shovel is made up of carbon fibre, a really light material which is very strong, durable, and will last for a long time. Up in the handle, we have a heated handle as well as a, a cooled handle for the summer. And then we also have a soft gel handle which forms around your hand as you grip the shovel and will reduce the risk of getting blisters and splinters. We also have a detachable shaft, handle and head which allows you to put on several different component parts. Now I'm off to Zach and he'll tell you about the components. I'm excited about this. This shovel comes with many components. He give you a snow shovel head winter time, square shovel head, a hoe, a rack head, and matok. It comes with three different types of shafts, a three foot shaft, a four foot shaft, and a five foot shaft. It comes with two different handles, and that is our shovel. That's all our components we have. So, uh, Zoe, um, I guess I talked to our engineers, and there's a few components of our um, shovel which I guess will be too expensive for us to, to, to make viable. And uh, these included, I guess, things like the density detector, as well as, um, I guess, adding the, the heating system to the, the handle. But if we really focus on the high-end market, 
I guess, uh, I guess uh, differentiate our product, we could focus on a, a, a high-end market where we could make this product viable. I agree, and I think the handle piece with the gel and the heat, that's not going to be too big a deal. I think they have those now, like in four-wheelers, they have heated handles. That probably would fit really well. Um, the detachable head shaft, I, you know, that's not going to be too big a deal. Carbon fiber is in place. It's out there. It's also it, it's very, I guess, common these days to have everything in one. So by having a tool where you can use the component parts, absolutely, we could uh, really hit a, a good market here and a focus on households. Sure. And uh, I guess the daily uh, DIY um, backyard again. Absolutely. If you want to put Absolutely. it that way. I think it's awesome. Yeah, so uh, to make this product, I guess, viable and to, to be able to sell it, we um, would have to, I guess, put in a lot of effort for the marketing push for it, but um, I feel that it could be a successful product. I agree. A few modifications maybe, but for the most part, I think we're good. So how was your experience with our product? You know, I've been I've used shovels for a long time in my life. I live on a farm. And I'm telling you, this product will has taught me a lot of things. I always have shovels. I'm kind of a delicate blist use, like delicate hands. And I think it'll definitely take care of that. I love the rubber footing. I think the whole experience, the whole development, you guys have developed something that will work for me. The individual that's on here. Hey Zach, I um, heard you were designing a new shovel. Um, what'd you learn from doing that? I learned that shoveling can be easy and convenient. Nice. You can use the shovel for regular shoveling. You can get an attachment, put a snow shovel on there. Then you get a square shovel too. It can have multi-use. It's good to know. In Evolution 1, we learned five different things. First off, we, we learned that ideas do not have to be big. We started out with a basic shovel and we transformed it in to ice a new product that will appeal to different types of people. I agree. The, um, we also learned that the sky's the limit. You don't have to think small. Think big. There's a, also, on top of that, that improvements for simple items are very easy to make. Anybody can look at anything in the world and improve it somehow. Great. Great. Um, we talked about the improvements don't have to be Big, but they can be little improvements, even a new handle we talked about. They, they can be small improvements and still improve. We also learned that by working in a group, you can achieve way more than working by yourself. Through group input, we're able to adapt the product and put in different ideas and create a brand new product. Great. And we're gonna, we think that everybody should be taking Shoveling 101 today. Yeah. So, you should come see Professor Hutchinson and exactly. I'll teach you. How to do schooling for dummies. <laughs> Shoveling for dummies. Zoe, you know, we learned today that we don't really need this problem statement anymore because we've resolved our issue. So, as far as I know, it's going in the bin. Good idea. Um, tomorrow, what time did we say? 11 o'clock, sir? Okay, I think we should do. Show me some dummies. Oh.